Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so happy almost New Year, artists. I can't believe another year has flown by. As they say, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, we're gonna have fun today with a really super easy and appropriate celebratory New Year's Eve painting with some fireworks in the shape of a heart. It's gonna be super cute. We're gonna use our four standard brushes that I use for most classes. So I have my big square brush here, wash brush, then I have a pointed medium brush, and then two small detail brushes here. I'm gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I'm starting with for today's background step, I have black, some ultramarine blue, some violet, some cadmium red, cadmium orange, and some cadmium yellow. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, I'm gonna start out with my largest wash brush here. A little bit of water on that brush, always into the acrylic paint. I'm going to start by mixing up a dark blue. So that's just gonna be this gorgeous blue color with a little bit of black mixed into it. I don't wanna go too dark because I'm gonna have my skyscraper silhouettes later. So I wanna make sure I have a nice contrast, even way up top here. Don't wanna to go too dark. I love to have those bright colors. Going to go across the top part here with a back and forth motion and get that paint soaking into the canvas texture. Nice and solid, okay? And I'm gonna just work my way down a little tiny bit there with my first color, beautiful. And I'm gonna work my way to purple now, but I'm going to mix together my blue with my purple first. And that way I can go right underneath and have a nice gradation transition there. Okay, so a little bit of purpley blue right underneath my dark blue. Blending them together, don't be shy. Okay, rinsing my brush slightly before coming in with my purple right underneath. Okay, so that top part is sort of like our night sky creeping in. Okay, blending them together, not leaving them too stripey. Okay, working our way from the top down. So far, so good. I think I'm gonna take that purple a little bit further. A little bit more purple. And I'm gonna start then adding some red, but same idea with that intermediary step between the last two colors. We're gonna do another in between here with a purple mixed with red. Look at that beautiful burgundy color. I'm just blending that right into my purple, creating a beautiful sunset gradation here for our background. Look at those vibrant colors. So beautiful. All the way up, going with that same brush just to get everything blended. Okay, and then we're gonna just have red on its own, right underneath. Beautiful, vibrant, bright color here. Mixing that together with our red violet, purpley red. Working our way through the color wheel here. If you would like to learn more about the color wheel, I do have a course on color theory and how to 
blend colors, the mix colors on Skillshare. And there's a link below for a free month for my students. So you can actually go check that out for free if you'd like to learn more. Kind of working our way through a color wheel here, getting all kinds of great tones. All right, gonna grab a little bit of red orange now, right underneath. Working our way down all the way. Beautiful colors today. Looking good. We don't have very much space left. But when I get to the bottom, I want to have yellow. So I'm going to add that right now just to make sure I don't go too far down. And then that strip right in between is going to be for orange. But you can again mix that intermediary color in between. So yellow orange there. into just orange itself, which would then blend into your red orange. Okay, so we have lots of beautiful colors today. Rainbow background. My cup of tea, my favorite. I have a full rainbow. <laughs> okay, and then once your gradation is looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and retire our brush and we're going to step away and we're going to let this layer dry completely and then we'll come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background and fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So I have some black and white and then I have some more of my ultramarine blue, some more violet and some more cadmium orange and yellow. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. I'm going to start now tracing out my building shapes. And you can use either your smallest brush or I think I'm gonna use my second to smallest brush today for this step. A little bit of water into my black just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and blended. Okay, now we're going to create a whole city skyline here and this really can be whatever you'd like it to be. So for, in my case, I'm just doing a random city and we're just going to work our way across here from one side to the other. And we're going to create all kinds of rectangular shapes and then on some of them, Perhaps you have like a little triangle on top and we're gonna make these buildings however we like. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fill them in as I go. You can trace out your city shape entirely first and then come back and fill it in if you would prefer or just fill it in with black as you go. Trust yourself in the city planning process. Okay. And we just want to try to keep our lines pretty straight up and down. Okay, for these rectangular shapes here. And if we start smaller with our shapes, we can always make things a little bit bigger. Whereas going the other way is much more difficult, especially when you're working with black on this colorful background. So take it slow and take it easy. So like for this one, I'm adjusting it slightly and now I'll need to adjust the top part a little bit. Just like so, but don't worry too much about perfection. There's no such thing as perfection anyway. And it'll look really cute when it's all finished and everything's come together. And I like to leave space in between my buildings. That way you can see little glimpses into our beautiful sunset colors. Okay, so this one was more of a square shape. And again, you can just follow along with my shapes 
or you could build your own. You could build your own iconic skyline based after whatever city that you live in or whatever city you like to visit. And then also some of these buildings will be overlapping each other. So I want to have some peekaboo through my buildings here to my beautiful sunset colors, but I do also want to have some buildings that would look like they are touching, but maybe one is in front and the other is behind. So nice big classic sky skyscraper shapes. And I'm also going to have sort of a main landmark type building, maybe a skyscraper that's extra tall. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a diagonal here, working my way down, adjusting as I go. And then perhaps make it a little bit taller on one side. And it can even have a little bit of a tower at the top. A little needle tower. I'm not a city girl, so I don't even know what are those? Is that a antenna? Is it a place where lightning can strike so that it doesn't strike the building? <laughs> I'm a small town kind of girl. I have been to quite a few large cities and I've noticed these, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments section why those buildings do have those big, I think, antenna sticking out from the top. Also, let me know what your favorite big city is. I want to hear from you. What big city are you near? I like to visit big cities for their art museums and for concerts. Get a little overstimulated from all the crowds. So I like to go outside of the cities and the outskirts. I often look back on great skyscapes like this. more of a look from the distance kind of gal than I'd be in the middle of it. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna do a little overlapping building right here as well. Perhaps it's a little bit denser in our city center. And we're gonna have that building come in front of my other building like so. Really however you like. Looking good and I think I'm just gonna have a few more kind of coming off the side. Very cute. This is sort of like we have a penthouse apartment great view of the city or we are on an adjacent hillside to be this close to big buildings like this you probably need to be in a penthouse apartment great vantage point for the fireworks show Okay, and so I have plenty of buildings and a few sort of iconic shapes as well. Keeping it varied and interesting. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead now and let that section dry. And we're going to rinse our brush and work up here in our sky again. So we're going to do our fireworks now, and the fireworks, I want to do them in a heart shape. 
but I don't want to do a heart here with paint because it's not going to be covered with the fireworks. We're not going to have enough going on there. So instead what I'm going to do is really lightly kind of outline a shape of a heart just with water. And it doesn't need to be a perfect heart shape. And I'm here in the high desert, so it's gonna dry in like two seconds. <laughs> but that way you're even just getting your hand sort of familiar with where you wanna go with it. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue for the center here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. And my first firework I'm gonna have be pretty much dead center. And I'm gonna come out in all directions, four cardinal directions, and then in between, sort of like a flower, but we're going for like an explosion here. And then we're gonna have kind of teardrop shapes here to lean into that explosion feeling bringing my brush strokes all the way in there towards the center and then just creating that teardrop shape very much like painting a flower from the center out nice and then coming further out from the center more light blue I'm gonna come in between my little flower petals. Right, like so. Feel free to use your tiny brush if you would prefer. Okay, and I think I will grab my smaller brush for a secondary color. I'm gonna take a light yellow orange yellow, orange, and white together. And I'm gonna do a secondary layer of color coming from the center all around, like so. Got a little bit of black in my sky here. Let's see if I can quick touch up grabbed a q-tip really quick it's gonna drive me crazy be careful not to pull your hand through your lovely little cityscape but I think it's good to show how to mend things as well so I'm just really quick gonna grab some orange and I snuck a little bit of red on my palette you don't need it for your fireworks but I wanted to do a little color match really quick. They're much better. Otherwise, it's going to be too annoying to me. Okay, quick mend. All right, back on track. And I think I'm going to switch to this brush that I was using for that touch up. That little tiny one is good for details, but it just takes so long for everything else. Okay, and I'm gonna take this orange and bring it all the way out, and I can barely see where I did my little heart outline, but we're wanting to bring the outline of this firework here to that heart line. And then also up here, we're gonna kind of be warping some of our fireworks so that it fits inside of that heart shape. I can sort of faintly see it, but you can always skip ahead really quick and come back. I'd like to see how the shape comes together a little bit more clearly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I like my little firework shape. Okay, and I think I'm gonna grab a little bit of a light blue 
just for the center here for a little bit more interest in our little beautiful floral looking explosion. So cute. And put some blue right on top of my blue streaks as well. I'm kind of just having fun with the colors here. And that is looking pretty firework like. I'm okay with that. And we're gonna do now two more fireworks up in the sort of arches part of our heart. So I'm gonna grab purple now. And I'm gonna come up into this section and I'm gonna do a similar little explosion up in this left-hand corner, just like so. And I'm gonna do little brush strokes coming out in between and sort of build it from the center coming out. And then Working within this heart shape, I'm gonna have a couple that sort of curve a little bit, like they're coming down from the sky from the explosion. And a little bit coming further down even, and see now we've created that top heart shape with our firework shape. And I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a secondary sort of tone of purple here. And you can't see it that well, but it does add a little bit more depth. So we have a little bit of a shadow and then maybe a lighter color as well, just in the center. So I have sort of three tones of my purple firework and I have lots of brush strokes. It's not as clean of an explosion one as this center one. It has more of that sort of firework shape. And I think that's really cute. And we're gonna have a little mini guy here as well. And we actually don't even need to do the little center shape because he's just a tiny explosion. And we're gonna just kind of use him to help fill in this heart shape. And I'm realizing I need to go a little bit further out with this one as well. And since I have blue, why not add a little bit more blue? All right, so now you can see we actually sort of have that bottom firework shape. I'm gonna grab some darker blue on my brush and add that into my blue firework. Look at how cute that's looking. <laughs> All right, and let's do one more firework up in this top area. One more big one. And we're gonna kind of have that opposite of our purple one. And all of my brush strokes here are curving down a little bit and filling out that heart shape. Okay. And as you kind of add those brush strokes, you can always come back. Like I'm just rinsing my brush and switching back over to purple really quick, just to make sure that I have that full heart shape completed. <laughs> Cute. And I think even a lighter purple. Would look nice for a few nice bright brush strokes of almost white. Very nice and some blue again. Getting getting creative you guys. Adding a little more. <laughs> Alright that's looking good and now we have one final little area and I think I'll do some orange mixed with some yellow and we're gonna have sort of the same 
balance here as on the other side of just another little firework. So those two are sort of paired off together and we can even add some orange into our little yellow one. And also maybe some nice bright yellow, clean, almost white, just like so. And we're getting pretty good with our heart shape here, grabbing just a little bit more light blue, just to make sure that my shape is all filled in and filled out here. And that's looking pretty cute. All right, and then we don't want our shape too perfect. So I have my light blue here. And once I have a pretty good heart shape, you can come outside of the boundaries just slightly in a few places if you'd like. Like so. I wanted to capture like perhaps the firework artist was trying to explode them off in a heart shape or maybe you were just right time right place with your camera that is the vibe that we're going for today so not too deliberate but definitely that firework shape and that's looking really cute let's go ahead into our buildings now again we're going to switch back to our buildings Going to create a light blue. Feel free to use your smallest brush if you would prefer with this step. And I'm going to come into my buildings and add some lights. So the lights are on in somebody's home, and some of these lights are going to be little horizontal brush strokes. You can skip some floors because not everyone's going to be home, right? Some might have all three rows, just like so. And I think this is an important step. I like to add some that are like a whole floor of windows. And maybe some of these buildings have different types of rooms, right? So like so, and then again, this building was in front. You can kind of build it however you like. Looking super cute. This one is just so fun and simple. And what I like to do is add all of my lights. And then if I want, I can come back later and sort of refine things a little bit with black if you went a little bit too heavy handed. Super, super simple to do. We have some long windows on this iconic building. I'm just building my buildings however I like. I don't know if there would be windows up there, but I'm going to add them. And I'm going to have lots of lights on because I would hope lots of people would still be awake for the ball drop. I love New Year's. I love a good fresh slate. And we'll definitely be ringing in the New Year's with a toast. Okay, super cute, look at that. For my final touch, I'm just gonna add a couple really cute stars and I'm just gonna grab my brush and use the back of my brush just for a few little twinkly lights. 
here like the night is creeping in. Just gives it that nice little finishing touch. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section below. If you painted along, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club where my students can join and do just that. I'd love to see it, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own imagination. I'd love to have you over there. Make sure to check out Color Theory one-on-one -on -one with that free one month link for Skillshare below. There's a lot of other great stuff that you can watch on there as well. And that is the end of the instructions uh, for this week's painting tutorial. So until next time, happy new year and